Hello, and welcome back to the Sentient Sack Puppets. Gaming has come a very long way since its early days, to the point where it's almost a universally enjoyed medium. I feel like just about everyone I know has at least tried some video games or plays regularly. But what if I told you that there was a time where this insanely profitable medium went down the crap hole? That's right, I'm talking about the game market crash in, of 1983. Now, this was due to a lot of different reasons, uh, mostly because there were many different consoles in the market. You know, there was the ColecoVision, Atari, and television, and then all these other crap ones that were really just oversaturating the market. And also what was oversaturating the market were games. Games that were absolutely under no check. And people could just make as many terrible games as they wanted and release them, and it just really oversaturated the market and caused a huge crash. Now, a lot of people like to point to two specific games for this. Atari 2600's E.T. The Extraterrestrial, and Pac-Man. I really don't like pinning it on those two games, because it was really a mixture of a lot of different things. But I find it really interesting that something like Pac-Man, one of the greatest arcade games of all time, could cause such a huge disaster in the gaming market. But let's think about why. The year was 1980. Arcades were huge and all, but in 1980, one came out that really defined what video games were. And that, of course, was Pac-Man. It was really one of the first arcade machines where you played as a character. Instead, before, you were just playing as the ship from this, or the little dot from that, and there were no really definable characters in gaming. And of course, everyone was very excited to be able to play this at their convenience in their own homes. So, Atari decided to make a home port of it. And let's take a look at this. So here is Pac-Man on the Atari 2600. Now imagine your kid in 1981. Pac-Man is the biggest thing in the arcade right now. I think, I can't, I'm not, I don't know. Pac-Man is huge. Pac-Man is huge. And you wake up on Christmas morning, or your birthday, whatever, and this is what greets you. Look, it, it still looked like he was ready to be eaten. Everything flashes, it looks terrible, the sound effects just burn your ears. The colors are washed out, and Pac-Man is not looking too good. What is this sound effect? Where did this come from? Who decided to make this? <laughs> and I can't really show this, but it is terrible to control. What did I just do? I can't even tell. I don't even want to play this anymore. Uh. What is that sound effect? Is that supposed to be good? So as you can see, Pac-Man on the Atari 2600 is awful. What if I told you that there was actually a playable version of Pac-Man on the Atari 2600? Well, not Pac-Man, but Miss Pac-Man. This is a much better version of Pac-Man on the 2600, so let's take a look at it. So this is Miss Pac-Man, and as you can tell, it is very much more playable. Um, 
the sound effects aren't completely degrading on your ears. So that's basically Miss Pac-Man on the Atari 2600. As you can tell, it is much, much more playable than Pac-Man. This is kind of embarrassing. It's very hard to play while looking through the camera. Alright, so as you can tell, this is a much better version of Pac-Man. If you have a 2600, this is definitely one that you should get. And if you're looking to get into 2600, I would honestly recommend picking this up first. While not the best port of Pac-Man, it plays surprisingly well, and it's something that I find myself hooking up my Atari just to play. With that, thank you. With that, thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can stay up to date on the Sentient Sock Puppets on Twitter. I'll put that link in the description. And if you're tired of video games, look at the Sentient Sock Puppets page for Major's reviews of cartoons and David's reviews of movies. With that, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.